Hello and welcome to HD's weekly talk show, The Interview and our special segment, Coffee on Sunday. Shobha Tharoor Srinivasan is politician Shashi Tharoor's sister. But that is not her only claim to fame. She is a powerhouse of talent. She is an author, a poet, a voiceover talent and a translator. And also the first ever Amul baby. Instead of writing a book on her well-known brother, she wrote one on her mother. Let us meet Shobha Tharoor in this edition of Coffee on Sunday. Welcome to the show, Shobha Tharoor Srinivasan, rather a long name. And thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Kumkum. It's a pleasure to be here. Let me begin with your work. You are an author, poet, writer, translator, a voiceover talent, and you also have worked for people with disabilities. Aren't you dabbling in too much? Not quite, if I may correct you on that. Um, in many ways, I've been a communicator and a storyteller all my life. And it's interesting in all of the examples that you gave, I'm essentially using my words or sometimes my voice, which uses words, to tell a story. I use my voice to convey a message. Similarly, in the nonprofit world when I work, I worked in, in the area of development. So I used the skill of my pen, my writing and my words to tell the story of clients, of people who needed particular projects fulfilled. Um, we, we had many, many stories to tell to draw in funders. So that was a storytelling as well. Um, so in many ways, as I said, I've used my words to tell stories and that consistency has shown through everything I've done. Why did you stop working for people with disabilities? You know, it's not really a question of why did I stop working for people with disabilities. My first career was as a director of development for a large organization that served people with disabilities. It wasn't that I was working directly with them. I did that for a long time. You do burn out working in the nonprofit world. And to be honest with you, I was looking for a change to do something different. Um, I decided to quit and come and help my brother on his first campaign. But I decided that I really needed to spend more time with my mother who was widowed by then. And um, the flexibility of working for yourself allows you the ability to travel. You came from the US to campaign for your brother, Shashi. I did. I did. Tell me some interesting moments, some nightmarish ones, considering you were from the US and the heat and dust of India, and of course the campaigning. So take me through that. Uh, well, Kum Kum, my brother has this lovely line that he, I use as well as often as I can. He says, India matters to me and I want to matter to India. And I have always seen myself as a global citizen. I went away to India, I mean to America as a teenager because I had a scholarship as an undergraduate. So I've been gone a very long time. However, I came home to India every year, even in those days. I'm not one of the diasporic Indians who didn't come to India for many years. So when you talk of heat and dust, uh, I'm familiar with it. It's what I grew up in, it's what I come back to. So that is the first response to your question. As far as working on the campaign, the first campaign in 2009, you know, my brother himself was new to the country in that way because he had had a wonderful, illustrious career for 29 years in the UN. You know, when he came to do something that he hadn't ever done before, literally walking the streets of his constituency, uh, you know, speaking about what he can do for his constituents, select, you know, asking for votes, etc. It was a brand new 
task uh, in some ways. And I think I came just as a supporter, as a family member, to say that we're with you. Also, I came to support my mother, to be honest. Um, she was not very pleased about him joining politics. Nightmares, well, he didn't have a lot of time to campaign. I guess that would definitely be a nightmare, even though he had accepted the, uh, you know, the position from the Congress party to run. Um, the people in Kerala at that time were rather unhappy about the fact that somebody from abroad had been given this ticket that they had perhaps thought would be theirs. So we had a lot of difficulties of that kind when he started out. But as you know, he won by a landslide and it was wonderful. You said he wanted to change many things here and he stood for change. Do you think with his years now in politics, he is a bit disillusioned and perhaps even you are? Well, I don't want to speak for him, but as a family member, I definitely feel like, you know, um, I was thinking of um, some Malayalam sayings, but essentially I think sometimes that uh, his worth and value is recognized nationally by the public. I'm not entirely convinced that uh, he has been utilized to the best of his abilities. That's as much as I can say. Coming to your work and your range in writing, which is ri rather vast, from elephants to Raja Ravi Barba. Yes. So take me through that. That's a lovely question. Thank you. And as a writer, it's always wonderful to be able to get an opportunity to talk about one's work. I think as a children's writer, what I've done is essentially brought books that I'm hoping children and even their parents, because you know, I read to my children, now I read to my grandchildren. I'm sure parents are still reading the books that their children read. The books are not books that you just look at once, read and put away. I really would like to believe that all of my books are books that you can go back to and learn at different stages of your life. So when I say I wrote a story about you know, Prince with a Paintbrush, the story of Raju Ravi Varma, which as you know is in the national zeitgeist because last few months ago, uh, Amitabh Bachchan uh, used it as a clue in Kaun Banega Kraurpati, which was very exciting to me. So I, all of the books have been different, but they all have one thing in common, in that I'd like them all to be something that you can read at different stages of your life. There's a learning at different stages. You'll see that with all of my books. So at every stage, there's a little bit of an interactive element, and there's a little bit of this, what I call a takeaway, something that you can go back to and take away from at every stage. Interesting. While living in the US, you said, India matters to me. It's something your brother also said at My one brother point said it. India matters to me. I want to matter to India. Yes. Uh, so, do you think long distance relationships work? Absolutely. Why not? We have access to everything with the internet, with Google, you know, with all of the other ways, as Tom Friedman's famous line of the world is flat. We have access to everything. We all know about everything. Let me take you down memory lane and you face the camera as the first Amul baby. Just take me through that. Well, I was an infant, so obviously I don't remember that incident at all. These are all part of the family lore, family stories. I do have pictures though from the shoot. There is one photograph that shows a, about a dozen pictures and he said, we took 712 pictures before we found this one. And then there's a picture of me as a baby. And I was a black and white campaign. Sham Benegal was the uh, photographer, which of course in later years I've seen all of his films and think of him as a great director. And I in fact had a good fortune when he brought brought the film to Berkeley, California. He had a, they had a little Sham Benegal retrospective and I went to see one of the films that I'd already seen before, but I went. My mother specifically said to me, you have to go and say hi to Sham. I said, mom, there'll be so many people standing in line. I don't want to do that. She says, no, you have to do it. So I stood and waited till the crowd thinned and then went up to him and said, hi, Mr. Benegal, I'm your first Amul baby. And right away, he gave me a big hug and said, oh my God, you're Chandran's daughter. And for me, actually, I remember that incident, even though it was about 15 years ago or 20 years ago, maybe. I feel excited because very often I'm known as Shashi Tharoor's sister. But I, you know, somebody selling me Chandran's daughter felt really special. What your little sister looks like, they must have asked what your daughter looks like to my father. And she was this lovely chubby, I was not as chubby, she was a chubby little baby. And when they did the colour campaign, they took her picture and, you know, her big eyes and chubby cheeks and all of that. It was a lovely photo shoot. Walking the ramp, 
you've done that also and then you were crowned Miss Calcutta and your sister was the first runner-up. My sister was the first runner-up. In fact, she was my runner-up in Calcutta, but she's taller, slimmer, all of those lovely things. And when we came to Bombay for the finals, she was the first runner-up indeed, and I didn't make it. Um, Swaroop Sampat, who is uh, Paresh Rawal, the actor's wife, was actually Miss India that year. Coming back to Amul. Is amul butter a must in your home? I think we had only amul butter all throughout when I was growing up in, in India. And now? Now I don't remember. We're not eating that much butter. We do a lot of ghee. While in the US, you spoke about the brown experience and also mentioned people asking you about the bindi on your forehead. There must be much more Shobha. And I'm not going to use the word discrimination at all. It is true. Questions about the bindi, is this an item of, you know, people thought maybe there was a hole there with a little red filling. That kind of question I was asked. It is partly <coughs> because of ignorance rather than of racism or anything else. I was very welcomed. Part of it is the college that I went as an undergraduate on a full scholarship. I ended up becoming a celebrity there because I was the only Indian girl on campus. I think after 9-11 there have been more changes in America and then of course you know, everybody's life experience is different. I never came feeling like I needed to leave India behind and turn morph into a new American. I believed always that you could be comfortable in both worlds. Now on the biography on your mother, and let me ask you what she did. Why a book on me and not on your famous brother? You're right, where did you hear that? It is true, that was the, well, the first thing she said when I gave the book to her, is why have you written a book about me and why not about your brother and she said I have not invented anything I am not famous and I said mother this is a tribute to you because you're an extraordinary woman who at every stage of our lives has inspired us by your actions it's not a traditional biography it is a story that has a timeline of a biography it begins in Kollangod where she was born which is a small village in Kerala and it brings her up to today and getting her driving license she renewed. renewed her driver's license about four years ago uh, that is absolutely true when and she, she was 82 in in Kerala she had two cars because the old car was really old but she called it her wheelchair and she drove it everywhere so why the book on her which you answered and why not one on your brother well, it's not my job to write his biography. I don't think there'll be, you know, many, many people who'd love to do it when the time comes. Perhaps Shashi will write his own at some day. Your mother, you've said, had her share of tragedy and triumphs. Take me through those moments or through some of those incidents and which she and you may perhaps like to forget. Well, obviously, you know, not that we want to forget, but I remember for years waking up thinking my father was still alive. We lost my father at a very young age. He was only 63 when he died. And he had his first massive heart attack when he was 38 years old. So my mother, as a young girl from the village who went straight off to London and in other parts of the city, she, all, she was very, very <clears throat> shaken by that heart attack incident. I'm sorry to take you through a tragedy which of course is best forgotten. However, how did she and all of you handle Sunanda's unfortunate death and the controversy that followed? Well, Sunanda's passing, I mean, she was a vibrant, beautiful woman um, in her early 50s, you know, passing away was obviously a huge shock for us. Um, and really, you know, what seeing our, my brother's broken heart was very hard for the, all of the family. So that was our initial reaction. However, what followed was actually a real travesty and really a really dark period in our lives, especially for my mother. And you know, my brother has had the most impeccable, impeccable reputation in his career, in his public life. To have a man of that stature be then talked about by people that I mean, I'm sorry to say, but even media journalists of who we didn't particularly respect, you know, barking and screaming and calling him murderer and, you know, ridiculous titles like that was obviously extremely painful. It was very difficult for my mother. Yes. How did you see her cope with it and help Shashi cope with it? Well, Shashi, luckily, 
you know, knew his own innocence and was doing, he was grieving, he was a grieving husband. Um, he had the wisdom to not, to try not to take this seriously. I'm sure it was hard, I'm sure it was difficult to even have you be called all kinds of names. We would have to counsel our mother who every once in a while would say she encountered somebody who would ask some question about a case and things like that and she used to be very upset. So we would give her the strength. Coming to a happier subject, how is it to be a lesser known sister of an overachieving brother. You have yourself said that you were often ignored in your formative years. I was the easiest child. I was just a very simple and an easy growing child who didn't give any difficulty to the parents. So it was easy for me to be left alone. You know, Shashi with all his achievements required a little bit more time and attention. I wasn't ignored, but it, I was not a problem growing up. Now, as a lesser known sibling of my brothers, um, that is true, I guess. We grew up in Shashi's shadow, but we've always had our own achievements and we've let those sort of dictate who we are. I'm very proud to be known as Shashi's sister. What are the things about him which you would like to change? And tell me the negatives. What I'd like to change, I think, I think he gives people a lot of rope, as I call it. But unfortunately, in politics, you know, some of the bad things about politics that I'd like to say is that people are not always straightforward. Well, as a loving sister, I would like him to go to bed earlier. I would like him to take some, you know, to, to rest more often, uh, to remember that, uh, you know, that the, the world's problems are on his shoulders on some level, but there are others who should be paying attention to it too that he really needs to pay attention to himself a little bit. He has neglected his physical health in the sense that he doesn't have time to keep his body in shape, as they say. So what would I like to change? I would love to, for him to have an hour at the gym. I would love for him to go to bed by, you know, at least 10, 30, 11. Uh, those are the kind of things I'd like to change. Do you run for the dictionary when you and he have a conversation? No, I don't do that. I think, you know, I, I actually was in a PhD program in English literature. I, I think I've, my vocabulary is reasonable. Why does he use these heavy and difficult words? And have you ever cautioned him? Because as a politician, they perhaps don't work. But you know what? I think we're taking it kum kum. I understand that he is now, it is sort of, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Shashi does not speak in order not to be understood. He's a superb communicator and he uses words and, and phrases that will be understood by most people. The fact is we have all become, we now speak a, a wonderful hybrid Hindi-English mixture sometimes. We're not really challenging ourselves to speak in, with a proper, with the kind of language that we've all been trained to use. So it's not that he's going, he's speaking to confuse people so that we have to die for the thing. But it has ended up now becoming almost a joke. It's sort of, he's playing into it because after he had done Farago or Snolly Goster or a few words on the internet, he became called, you know, he published that book with Penguin called Tharurasaurus so that people could learn. So that whole notion of using words beyond the ordinary is something that has been part of our life. Did your brother get his reaching for the stars spirit from your mother? I would say he, he may have. Perhaps it's true. And finally, yes. being a son, is he a pampered child? You know, he was not growing up. My mother pampered us much more. I think for whatever reason she expected more from him, so we got a little bit more of a free pass. Today I would say that her eyes follow him all the time. He, when he is not in the house, the house feels empty. We're with her all the time, but when Shashi is not there, something is missing. So is he pampered? No, poor man works too hard to be given that title. But he is definitely her favourite now. Shobha Tharoor, thank you very much. Thank you for your time and thank, thank you for you. taking all the questions. Thank you so much, Kumkum. That was fun. It was, it was different and I enjoyed it. Thank you. I'm glad. Take care.